make sure I got it right. Yes, but this comes to the ramp and sings and just blows me away every time I hear her sing. And Miss Karen, you know, when Desi was singing that, I couldn't help but remember that she she's here because of healing. Yes. She's here because of a miracle. When doctors That's had right. said yes. seven specialists, I'd had three miscarriages, three corrective surgeries. They said there was no way I could have children. But can yeah. I tell you what? Some TBN grandmas stormed the gates of hell and opened up heaven. I love that, Reba. Absolutely. And at a, actually, what's funny, at a TB tele, TBN telethon, I conceived destiny. <laughs> and 22 months later, Israel was born. So she is, and so uh, some of you little grandmas are wondering, is that really Destiny? That's really her. She's all <laughs> grown up, as we say. Yes. <laughs> and, and what I'm, I remember that time. Oh, yes. When the doctors were telling you that you could not have children, but you would not give up. And no, neither Donnie would Donnie, Donnie give up. Oh, and Donnie, I mean, th th we were in Miami, Florida, and I was five months pregnant with Destiny. We'd done a telethon, and we'd done a service. Went back to the hotel and I had every symptom of miscarriage. It was horrible. And I'd already had three, so I knew the symptoms. And I'll never forget, my husband marched around that bed like a madman. He called Paul and Jen on the phone and they began to pray. And we called prayer partners, they began to pray. But three days later, when they took me into the ultrasound, uh, the little girl said, it was doing the ultrasound, said, no, she's alive, because they, they said she was dead, but she was alive, and she's what here declaring the goodness of the Lord. What a miracle. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you know, I just believe that that's a word right now for right. somebody watching. Right. I believe there's a, there's a lady watching right now who needs right. that hope and that testimony. The Word of God says that, that the uh, a testimony is the spirit of prophecy. Absolutely. The testimony of Jesus is it's the spirit, spirit of prophecy. Of prophecy. Yes. And this is the testimony testimony of what Jesus has done. Yeah. So let it be a spirit of prophecy that's released to a lady watching right now who's believing God to give her a baby, to give her a miracle. So you cannot lose that hope, nor the word that God has placed in you. Even right. that word is a seed in you for the miracle. Absolutely. In Jesus' name. So Absolutely. right here sits proof <laughs> that the word works. Amen. Right. Oh, honey, there's so many things that's been happening in your life over the last few months mm -hmm. and um, the whole body of Christ right. has been you know in this time of really a, a grieving time for us right but a celebration for Miss Dottie right and you know this is and and I pray I get through this all right this is the first interview I've done since mom's graduation yeah. and uh, it's been you know the tale of two cities book starts at it's the best of times and the worst of times yeah and, uh, and it has been, it was such a shock. You know, who dies on a bus? On Mother's Day. Yeah, on Mother's Day. It was the, the 100th anniversary of Mother's Day. And of course, Mother, I said, you would die today, we'd all remember. <laughs> That's a daughter Rambo way. <laughs> and sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying, but what, what an amazing woman of faith. You know, you were t talking about, uh, this show tonight could be called Friends, because you're such a dear friend, Pastor Shirley Arnold, Miss Judy. And, you know, through this time, I have, I have treasured my sisters, I have treasured my friends, because men, I don't know if they grieve the same way as women, but the way you ladies have helped me to mourn, I don't grieve because grieving to me says I've lost something, and I have not lost anything. Right. I know exactly where my mother is, so I didn't lose anything. No. Yeah, but I count her. I so count her life as a seed, and... And what she's done, I, I, four nights after she died, um, and you and I was almost inconsolable because it's just, you know, you just feel like it's never the time. It's, of course. But four nights later, I had a dream, and in the dream, my mother was in the heavenly dimension with the Lord, and the Lord had on this, it, think of it like a Joseph's coat, but it was infinite, and it had the most vibrant colors. It was living, it was breathing, it was moving, and the coat was made up of the prayers of the saints and the songs of the saints, and it was just amazing. And my mother was standing there by the Lord, and he reached, and he put this coat upon her. And when he did, she threw her hands up and began to laugh, as only my mother can laugh. And when she did that, the coat began to kind of rip apart, and I'm watching this in the stream, the coat began to rip apart, and the pieces of it began to fall to the earth, and the more it fell, the more she laughed. And I saw different psalmists that I knew receiving an impartation, because it's wow. the mantle of the Lord, but it was the mantle also that Mother wore, and I saw part of that falling on destiny. Yes. And I realized sometimes a seed is sown, and so greatness can come. God wastes nothing. That's right. My mother's death is so timely, because there is a, there's a release of creativity, there's a release of the sound, there's a release of music, I believe, that's unprecedented, that is now coming 
coming and is here on the body of Christ for this end day harvest. The harvest has a sound. Yes, the harvest has a song. And I and I certainly believe that where she is now, she stands there and she you know joins Jesus in intercession. But I believe there's been a divine release of music and creativity. And we're seeing oh, that. there's no doubt. Of the, of the miraculous. You know, Mother was a real seer, too. A lot of people mm -hmm. didn't understand her prophetic gift. But Mother would see things that would happen. And, and I somewhat inherited that gift, too. And as a little girl, I was always, you know, I had germs, my invisible dog, but I also saw spiritual things <laughs> besides my invisible dog. But, you know, I, I really believe there's a generation that we're calling to that's, that's raising right. up that are able to see. You know, but there have to be mentors to help you to see. That's right. Because almost all of us, whatever our spiritual giftings are, there was a sabotage that came early on. Yes. The sabotage to destroy, to discredit, to make you feel shame, to make you feel like there's something wrong with you. Uh -huh. You know, me as a seer, other kids would make fun and say, you're weird, there's something wrong. And you start believing that right. thing. But I believe that God is raising up this generation of people like you, Miss Judy, Miss Shirley, myself, that are equipping young people and teaching them how to see, That's how right. to hear. Uh, I was flipping the channel the other day and there was a show on there and it was about children of paranormal or something. I don't know what the name of the show was. It doesn't matter. But it was it, and, it, and at first I'm like, oh, Jesus, let me get past this show. But I felt the Lord say, watch this. Because they were showing and they were celebrating young people that have giftings. Because mm -hmm. the gifts come from God. Right. But we don't know what to do with them. Right. And so many times because a parent goes, oh, I don't know how to handle that. I don't know how to mentor that. Sometimes we've run. But I've decided, you know what, God, I want to teach young people how to develop spiritual vision, spiritual That's hearing. That's so awesome. Right? And to teach them in the godly way, the kingdom way. Mm -hmm. to do that just like my mother taught me. You know, I, I have to say this while we're talking. Because you're a seer and my mother loves you. She didn't love you. She loves you, especially Miss Judy so much because she'd say, they have that thing. Miss Judy would be singing. She'd say, they have, she has that thing that I've got, that fight. <laughs> and you have that thing. It's such a seer. But, you know, at Mom's homegoing celebration, which was oh, so amazing. Heavens. It was incredible. It was so amazing. And, uh, uh, but you were there. And I remember I literally drug you into the limo with me yes. when we were going um, to uh, put Mother in the mausoleum there. Her body there, not Mother. My mother is nowhere near that place. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> but it was so, so awesome to have you there. But I, I really believe there's an impartation that she has left, not only into me, I believe that. but into destiny. Oh, there is no doubt. You know, you know the other day when, when uh, we were at the ramp and the Spirit of the Lord was just, had just fallen in the place, there was just silence. And uh, Sweet Des began to sing that song of her grandmother's, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place and i'm telling you he came he did. just like he came when she sang it and i knew yeah. that she was involved in seeing that service because we were we are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses yes and uh, she has now passed on this mantle and I, uh, to, of course to you and to death and i love that because the things that miss dotty taught you Right. imparted to you. Now you are a spiritual mother, right. but not only to Des and Israel, but to all of these young people that you're working with in Nashville, but not only them, but so many that you don't even realize. Right. And I think about Miss Dottie, how she impacted my life when I was a young girl. She didn't even know right. who I was. Right. There's <laughs> thousands of people watching right now. Right. And you know who you are. Mm -hmm. When you hear the name Dottie Rambo, you right. remember how she impacted your life mm -hmm. and how, what an influence. I know for me when I was at the funeral, yes. which was just such an experience. And you know, Miss Karen, we had, we've literally had thousands of requests of people that said, you know, we couldn't be there, we wanted to see it. So we put together just a little DVD and you can go to our website, theriveratmusiccity.com, just for a nominal thing. But we want, there's such an annoying, it was, it was not a funeral. I'm no, telling you, Holy Ghost showed not. up. It was a celebration, but also I believe an impartation of her, I think something was happening in the spirit realm even yes. during that service. And you know, I think people should have this because how many songs of hers did we do that day? We did, all, I there think was, almost 20. Yeah. There's almost 20 Dottie Rambo songs yes, on this DVD. The, I you know. sat there and wept. <laughs> as soon as they begin to sing the first one, you know, when they when the choir begin to sing, For oh, I'm sheltered in <laughs> the arms of God, uh, so let the storms rage high. I mean, it was just 
He came. Yes. He came. And I've seen some of this. And it's that it's just the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The, the anointing on her songs just lives forever. It lives forever because it's the Word. The Word is anointed and the Word is eternal. And she wrote the Word. And that's she what did. I want us to write is the Word. Yeah. And yeah. you do that so well. Uh -huh.